What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. All right, so before I get into this video, I want to give a big shout out to the brother Aram for the donation to the channel via the PayPal. Much respect to you for showing love. And uh, I did forget about the Jimi Hendrix video. Uh, I'll take care of that tomorrow. A video about Jimi Hendrix. Um, forgot to do that one. My bad. All right. So in this video, I want to talk about the chief, Robert Parrish. I think I talked about him uh, several months ago. I want to talk about him again. Um, the Boston Celtics dynasty would not have occurred without Robert Parrish. You know, sometimes we get too wrapped up in Larry Bird, Larry Bird, Larry Bird. Great player. I think he's the best all-around small forward the game has ever seen. Now, I can understand someone perhaps ranking LeBron higher because of longevity and, you know, other, other factors. But as a basketball player, I think Bird was better. That's just my opinion. Um, be that as it may, it wasn't just Larry Bird. You had Kevin McHale, Danny Ainge, earlier on, Nate Archibald. Uh, but Robert Parrish was essential. So, Robert Parrish, one of the best shooting big men of his era. He never averaged 20 points per game in a season. I think the closest he got to it was the 81-82 season when he averaged 19.9. Uh, usually averaged somewhere around 10 to 12 rebounds a night, one to two blocks per game. For his career, he shot 53.7% from the floor. Even his last year, at age 43, when he played sparingly, sparingly for the Chicago Bulls, he shot 49% from the floor. Um, even though he was never known as a big-time big scorer, because of his extraordinary longevity, he played an NBA record 1,611 games over what was then a record 21 seasons, subsequently since surpassed by Vince Carter, who played in 22 seasons. Uh, Vince is also the only player to have played in, I believe, four different decades. He started his career in the 90s, the very late 90s, played the 2000s, 2010, retired in 2020. But anyway, um, Robert Parrish is one of the finest shooting big men the game has ever seen. Uh, was a decent free throw shooter, 72% like Kareem. Um, finished with well over 14,000 rebounds, well over 2,000 block shots. Had over 9,600 field goals made uh, because of his amazing longevity. Um, he was born in Shreveport, Louisiana. Went to a local high school there was drafted in 1976 by the Golden State Warriors out of center, I think it was Centenary. And for four years, he was good. He was good. Um, but if, not, if I'm not mistaken, I think by the time he joined the Golden State Warriors, they were declining. This was, he, he joined them a year after they won the championship. I think by 1977, 78, the Warriors were declining as a franchise. By like 78, I think Rick Barry was gone. <clears throat> and they were a bad team. And not only that, Robert Parrish soon became dispensable because the Golden State Warriors were about to sign in 1980. They were about to draft a player by the name of Joe Barry Carroll. Now, Joe Barry Carroll at that time was a very, very promising prospect. I mean, this is a guy that, that many people thought was going to be a Hall of Famer. Now, after a, for a few good years in the NBA, Robert Parrish, excuse me, not Robert Parrish, excuse me, Joe Barry Carroll's apathy for the game and somewhat laziness began to show. And um, his level of play dropped dramatically. And uh, he started becoming known by the moniker Joe barely cares. So, <clears throat> that was for the future. At the time, Joe Barry Carroll was a prospect. So that made Robert Parrish expendable. Enter the Boston Celtics. 
Now, the year before that, which was Larry Bird's rookie year, Dave Cowens was uh, winding down his career as a Boston Celtic, although he would come back later on and play a year. I think it might have been 82-83 for the Milwaukee Bucks. But anyway, Dave Cowens was winding down his career in the NBA. So they needed a center. Red Arback saw they, uh, excuse me, Robert Paris being available and was able to acquire him via trade. At the same time, the draft, they were able to acquire a lanky 215-pound, 6-foot, 10-inch forward from the University of Minnesota, I believe, named Kevin McHale. This was the genesis of, arguably, the greatest front court in NBA history, Kevin McHale, Robert Parrish, and Larry Bird. Although, for the first few years of Kevin McHale's career, he did not start. He came off the bench. Robert Parrish did start, and he had an immediate impact on the franchise. His first year there, they won the championship in six games over the, over the Houston Rockets. Robert Parrish would go on to win two more championships in 1984 and 1986 with the Boston Celtics. Later on, after 1993, I believe, uh, Robert Parrish signed with the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, I'm trying to remember whether he was traded or not, whether he signed with them. No, he played until 1994. So he actually outlasted both Larry Bird and Kevin McHale. Uh, unfortunately, during that tenure, he also saw the unexpected and shocking demise of Lynn Bias just, what, 48 hours after he was drafted, and the um, unfortunate and tragic death of Reggie Lewis. In 1994, at the age of 41, Parrish left the Celtics and signed as an unrestricted free agent with the Charlotte Hornets. Parrish spent two seasons with the Hornets playing as backup to Alonzo Mourning. Parrish, by the way, is the Celtics' all-time leader in block shots, 1,703 offensive rebounds, 3,450 defensive rebounds, 7,601. In 14 seasons and 1,106 games with the Celtics, Parrish averaged a double-double of 16.5 points, 10 rebounds, and 1.5 blocks, and shot an amazing 55.2% from the floor. That's why I say he was one of the great shooting big men of all time. The man made over 55% of his shots as a Celtic and close to 54% for his career overall. Um, in 1996, Robert Parrish signed as a free agent with the Chicago Bulls after his release with the Charlotte Hornets. With Chicago, Parrish joined a, two, a, a team coming off a fourth championship with fellow Hall of Famers Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, and Dennis Rodman. And Tony Kukoc, even though he's an international Hall of Famer. Playing in his final season in the NBA with the Chicago Bulls, Parrish won his fourth NBA championship. He played a reserve role for the Bulls and uh, played until he was 43 years old. On August 25th, 1994, at age 44, Parrish retired from the NBA. He is also the oldest player to win an NBA championship, having been a member of the Chicago Bulls at age 43. He is also the third oldest player to ever play an NBA game, the two oldest players were Nate Hickey, who was 48, I believe, and Kevin Willis, who was 44 in his last game. If I haven't emphasized this enough, aside from his sweet shooting and, 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 and more than average uh, rebounding, Parrish was known for his defense, right? Um, that's something that Dave Commons was known for. Dave Commons was a guy noted for his defense intensity, all-around play, hustle. 
Parrish was much more subdued in personality than Dade Cowan was, but he was a great defender. He was, as I said, a great rebounder. He was also known uh, for a guy that could run the fast break. He was seven foot one, two hundred and thirty-five to two hundred and forty-five pounds during his career. So he was not one of these big lumbering, two hundred and seventy, two hundred and eighty pound centers. Fellow Hall of Famer team and teammate Bill Walton once called Parrish probably the best medium-range shooting big man in the history of the game. His trademark was his jump shot, which transversed a very high arc before falling. Parrish uh, was known for, like I said, his subdued and reserved manner. Walton said about Parrish, there was no showmanship to Robert's game. There was the rebounding. There was the defense. There was the scoring. There was the setting of screens. There was the way he ran the floor. How many centers in today's NBA do any of that? None of them. Before I end this uh, video, I want to go through his accomplishments. He's a four-time NBA champion, nine-time All-Star. He was on the 1982 All-NBA second team. In 1989, he was on the All-NBA third team. A member of the 50th and 75th anniversary teams. His number of double zero was retired by the Boston Celtics. And in college, he was an All-American by the Associated Press in 1976. And as a coach, he was the USBL, which I think is the United States Basketball League Coach of the Year. Let me, find, let me see what USBL. Yeah, United States Basketball League Coach of the Year back in 2001. As far as his aggregate totals, 23,334 points, 14,715 rebounds, 2,361 blocks. He's in the Basketball Hall of Fame as a player and the College Basketball Hall of Fame was a player. And he won Olympic gold in the Pan American ga uh, Games in 1975 in team competition. Uh, one of the great, great players in history. Um, by the way, in Centenary, Robert Parrish averaged 21.6 points and 16.9 rebounds per game. One of the great, great unsung players, the Chief Robert Parrish.